Many often say, death is an inescapable force bent on ruining the lives of others, and I would agree, but many often lack to think of the other unescapable factor of life one must face at least once in their lives. Tragedy, a black snake ready to bite at any moment, and friends, I have a reason to believe that discord has been bitten with ferocity. So, Discord's journey through death. You either love it, or love the scream and hype, or terror from it. Many moons ago, I did an extremely messy theory on the series back when there was only two episodes. I mean, I mean, look at it now. Now it has three episodes, and I'll tell you, there's never been a better experience than realizing there's lore and potential theory crafting for a My Little Pony audio drama and going on a 40 minute rant with just your thoughts alone. In fact, this video will probably be longer than 40 minutes. Uh, if you don't know what the series Discord's Journey Through Death is, well, you probably shouldn't go ahead and watch that because you should be watching The Last Adventure. Then watch Discord's Journey Through Death. The series itself is written by the FB guy and hosted on the Avika channel. And man, props to everybody who just like is part of the creation process of this series because their work is magnifique. By the way, it's also recommended that you watch my last three video on this too. The Zelda will be in the description, but it's not required, you know, if you think you can make it through this mess of a video without your brain exploding. Also, keep in mind that while I did go over and an, an oh, uh, I did go over and analyze all three episodes of the last adventure and Discord's journey through death. I did not really comb over the trailer for Discord's journey through death and also reread the MLP Cosmic Comics. We'll get into why I say Cosmic Comics later. And when I say we'll get into it, I, I mean I'll just like mention something about Com Cosmos like once. Um, but also feel free to if you guys have any ideas or theories on your own of this series. Go ahead and hit me up, because I'm probably going to need all the help I can get with figuring this thing out. But without further ado, let's hop back into Discord's distorted mess of limbo, because... Let's review a bit from our last dive into the depths of this series, shall we? My last time in my last video, my main theory is that Discord was dead. Well, no dirt, that's the whole point of the damn series, you idiot. But the, the main part of it was, my thought process was that this series was leading to the unhappy ending that happens at the last adventure, where Discord does not wake up from being dead, and, you know, people are sad. And, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have new evidence to support this theory. Let's start with this crusty freaking picture. My main belief is that this picture right here is meant to represent Fluttershy mourning the loss of Discord at his gravesite. This picture is even directly paralleled in The Last Adventure, where Fluttershy is once again mourning the loss of Discord. And here that is right here. But here's the thing, right? In the ending of The Last Adventure, when Discord wakes up and everything, he expresses great surprise at the fact that he was dead. Like, how do you go through one of the most traumatizing experiences that you in limbo that you just you just forget about it just like that you know unless death just put a spell on you like to make you forget your memories like huh and the most compelling evidence i have here is the fact that discord straight up walks up to twilight in the last adventure and asks oh hey could could could, could you go ahead and uh, just uh, delete my um, immortality and we, we, uh, no, you idiot, you were supposed to give that to death. There was this whole thing. 
how can this be the ending we're going for if in this ending where he succeeds that he wakes up and doesn't die he doesn't give his immortality to death instead he just gets to take it away from twilight like and that is why i firmly believe that the other ending where discord doesn't wake up is the ending we're going for Hey, wait a minute. That's my f that's my that's my ring. That's my f phone. Got hold on, hold on, guys, guys, guys. I gotta take this. I gotta, I gotta take this. I gotta take this phone call. <clears throat> uh, hola. Nah, nah. Nah, nah, you're, you're kidding. You're, you're joking. You're telling me that your dog is a multi-pound stick of butter? <laughs> no. No. It can't be! Wait a second! Guys, there's a third ending. That's too loud. <laughs> well, there's a blooper for you guys. This picture right here is supposed to be a depiction of legi what legitimately happens in the Discord takes a big permanent die timeline. That it wouldn't make sense, as if this is a grave on the right of Discord, you know, being the dead, then why is the gravestone different? <laughs> you could argue that maybe this this thing was just erected, this, the statue was just erected after long after Discord died. Shut up. <laughs> but not enough evidence for you? I hate you. In my last video, I had enough evidence to support the fact that Discord was indeed not going to come back to, back to life, and while this evidence does allude to a new third ending, it's not enough, so I will support a second theory to support this theory. Welcome back, did you miss this picture? It's only been less than a minute. Going off this picture, we can assume that either Fluttershy was the only one to come to this funeral, or Fluttershy stayed long after everyone ba went back home. I believe it's the latter, as even though it's a third ending, Discord still died and defeated the purple goo monster in the last adventure, therefore ponies would have still found new respect for him and go to his funeral. Speaking of the last adventure, there is a lot of mention of Fluttercord and how when one of them dies, the other will feel that immense pain of their loss. This is supported by Fluttershy's desperation in the last adventure saying things like, I don't know what I'm gonna do without him, asking Twilight if they could go back in time to defeat Purple Head Big Stupid Head McGee without Discord dying and singing a whole entire song about his death and he, he and that how she will be depressed when he's gone. <laughs> so here's the thing Fluttershy is also dead. Now hear me out, you dumble heads. Don't hit me with your nuclear attack beams yet. We obviously know that Fluttershy has been affected by his death, and that can take an incredible toll on a pony. Take a look at this picture. We got this disgusting looking creature here. Oh, wait a second, that's not a creature, that's that's you. So we got Discord sitting on, you know, stacked on top of Fluttershy here, being chained her. And I have a reason to believe that this is meant to symbolize the death of Discord weighing down hard on Fluttershy, making her worn out and depressed, as, you know, she, I mean, come on, she looks pretty worn out from this picture. She can't get her off her mind or out of her life. This would influence a certain deadly decision. Now, I'm not going to say the word, but you can probably infer that she kind of, yeah, you know... My theory is that when she died and met up with death, she went to the River of Souls, which remember, we know from episode 1, that the River of Souls is kind of like a staircase. Going to the description Purple gives on life, it being like a staircase filled with a multitude of decisions you can't go back on, and it all ending with a door, I believe these two staircases are connected, and that this door is the door to the afterlife. I also believe that once you go through this door, that no one in the series has seen behind, remember, except maybe death, that once you go through that door, you go through a rebirth of sorts. Also, by the way, while I was writing the, the script, uh, I learned that AKA actually stands for also known as. 
Why do you guys watch me? So, see this cocoon? No. Cocoons are meant to represent a rebirth of sorts. Once the caliber transforms into a butterfly, we as bronies, well, if you're not a brony, then, uh, what? Why are you here? <laughs> but anyway, we as bronies know that butterflies a lot of the time are connected to the character Fluttershy, which again supports the rebirth theory. How exactly she rebirthed and met up with death, seeing the staircase and all that, um, shut up. <laughs> we also see <clears throat> a butterfly swimming gently through the air in limbo, and this is most likely something like a memory of her, or a remnant of her. And this would explain why this butterfly barely says anything of, of substance, like, Discord, are you there? A Discord? Grow up, say something intelligent. Like spaghetti. There's also this little nugget of info. While I was rewatching The Last Adventure, I noticed that the thumbnail for the last episode had something a little, shall we say, noteworthy. This. Now, it may not seem that noteworthy, but the last theory I did, I really struggle. I, uh, I really struggled to speak also, but <laughs> I really struggled to come up with a final consensus on what the freak this thing meant. You see the resemblance, huh? 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 Now, at first, I thought that picture was supposed to represent some sort of, like, tornado thingy, but it turns out that it's actually connected to the weird winged thingamabob picture that I just showed you. So basically, the tornado with wings loses his loses its wings. What does that mean? Well, wings typically symbolize a sense of freedom, and when you take that away, it can certainly make sense that Discord has a loss of freedom while stuck in limbo. But what really got me interested is that bro broken or clipped wings can represent the loss of a loved one or losing something dear to dear to do to, a, a mishap. <laughs> While yes, you could say that. Well, of course, Discord lost the one one. He lost Fluttershine when he died. I'm not disagreeing with you, but I think it runs deeper than that. Why go through the effort to symbolize a lack of freedom and losing Fluttershy because Discord died, when that's already kind of obvious? A loss of a loved one means death, and yeah, I think Fluttershy would fit that role. Could I be wrong? Why, absolutely, I probably am, but it's something. Now, let us finally delve a little deeper into a character that I've neglected to mention up until this point. Y'all know the name. The name you all know. It starts with an S! Purplay! Now, before we get into this part of the theory analysis, I would just like to say, as the. Li like, literally, while I'm recording this right now, I just learned that Goosebumps got a new series on Disney's. Disney's. Disney's? D Disney Plus? Like. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, now. <laughs> Now, last time we established that there was something off, there was something weird going on with Purple. She she just doesn't seem to be who she says she is. Suspicious a lot of the times, it honestly contradicts herself sometimes. Say, for instance, in episode 3, Skelenor in episode 3 states that they never go out into limbo alone and usually take a buddy, and was confused to learn that when Discord met Purple, she was taking a walk out alone. It is clearly stated and shown that being alone in Limbo is a very dangerous thing to do. But Purple, in the very beginning of episode, this episode, asks if Discord is okay with taking a walk. And she makes the whole excuse with, Skelenor needs fresh air. Discord then responds, responds with, well, why can't you go, sucker? And she's like, nah, man, I want to be alone. Then seconds later, when Red, Skelenor, Ellie, and Discord are about to take their walk, Purple asks if Ellie can stay alone with her. I thought you wanted to be alone. Let's review something, shall we? 
Remember this song? I bid farewell to the port and the land And I paddle away from Equestria's white sands To search for my long ago forgotten friends To search for the place I hear all sailors end As the souls of the dead live forever in my mind As I lived all the years Come on, jam with they me. left me behind I'll stay on the shore but still gaze at the sea Oh yeah. Remember the fall and do they think of me? Four souls in the ocean together will be. Mm, so so I looked more into that song that we just heard right now and it turns out it's an actual song. The song is called Boats of the Ocean created by the Longest John. And the song is about a man who was the only survivor of a shipwreck, an event that took all of his friends. He then has to deal with survivor's guilt, and he ends up feeling so guilty that he decides that he's going to drown himself in the sea and join his dead friends. But right as he's about to do so, he realizes that he still wants to live out his life, as his friends would not blame him for surviving. They wouldn't like him to die as tragically as they did. He comes back to the shore to remember the fallen, and if they think of him. <clears throat> I... I have something to say I want... I have something I want to say... To Purple. Purple? I'm sorry. I misjudge you. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> Purple's story... Is it about some sort of evil alternate plan bent on creating misery for our level protagonist discord, but a some but a somber tale of survivor's guilt, how it all came to be. But to really answer what I believe to be the reason why Purple has survivor's guilt, a strong one at that, I must first go over a few things. We both most likely know that this right here was Purple in the past. In the past, I forgot to say, in the past. With her seemingly being sensitive about her eyes, and the fact being her eyes are swirly in the present and crossed out in this picture, and their hairstyles being extremely similar, I think that we can safely assume that that at some point was purple. The question is, what exactly happened here? Throughout the series, there's been some sprinkles of rebirth in the story. We just talked about it with Fluttershy. If we connect with Fluttershy dying and being rebirthed, then perhaps she rebirthed into the butterfly we see in Limbo. And if that is the case, then couldn't a rebirth change the physical and perhaps the mental state of purple? <clears throat> oh, why, yes. The blue pony was purple before she died, and when she died and met up with death, something happened. I find it quite peculiar that purple described life like a staircase, which is how death describes the river of souls. With, with the ending being a door, that you don't know what's through until you go into it. If no one knows what's through it, then hey, can't I just say that once you go through the door, you go through a rebirth process? But you may be asking, my dear viewer covered in plastic, if Purple was truly rebirthed or whatever, wouldn't she not be in this series? You'd be right, unless something went wrong. Perhaps, hear me out here, there was some sort of disaster that wiped out Purple and quite possibly all of her friends. They were all going onto the staircase to the afterlife, but one of them rebels. She steps into the door, beginning the process of transformation. Right before that transformation is complete, she has a thought, an idea, a reflection on everything that has led up to this point, and she decides to rebel. It doesn't matter if you've had unfinished business or didn't live your life out to the fullest. You are supposed to walk through that door. But if your emotions don't matter on whether or not you go through that door, then why should she care? Somehow, in some way, she escaped. However, now she's trapped in the land of Limbo, forever in a state of not being dead or living. She survived. While she's stuck in limbo, she got all the time to think, to understand her actions up to this point. She's able to feel guilty on being quote unquote the sole survivor, being the only one who could have a chance at living again. She builds a home forever alone. She's explored every nook and cranny in limbo, but there's no hope in escaping. 
the survivor's guilt can fully consume her as she ponders what believes to be her last waking thoughts. But someone new comes by. It's one of Discord's very own creations. Maybe they could help her finally escape this madness, but maybe it's alright if they don't. Now she has a home with new friends to protect and teach. She has a purpose. She can finally live like she's like... Damn it, I... Mm. I missed- I messed up the emotional freaking. <sighs> she can finally feel like she's living once again. <coughs> While this theory I believe does have some weight, there are a couple problems with it. One of them being why Discord's, cre why Discord's creations are down in limbo in the first place. If we go back to my first theory video, I said that in episode 2, before Discord met Purple for the first time, he went to sleep in limbo. And that moment right there, the the in-between state after, you know, before he meets Purple, wakes up and meets Purple, and all that stuff, I believe that is when all of Discord's creations got sent down into limbo. This is important to mention because I think Discord ended up sleeping for years in Limbo. How that happened? I don't know, but it explains a few things. If Discord went to sleep for years in Limbo, it would explain how Purple and her friends, Discord's creations, became so close and cared for each other deeply. It would explain how all these characters had such a deep past with each other, and it would explain how Purple is able to walk alone in Limbo, since she's been there the longest and knows the place the best. It would make sense for her to be the leader of the group, and she certainly acts like the leader of the group anyway. This would also explain the one time that Purple was afraid of the dang door. The monster has the ability to turn into your worst fear, and if this is the monster, then hey Purples, hey, hey Purple, why is your worst fear a door? It makes you wonder about the door to the afterlife, doesn't it? it? Makes you think about all those friends you left behind, the fear of confronting them, huh? Oh yeah, by the way, Purple calls the monster a they when nobody else does. It's almost like she knows what caused that monster to manifest and learned that with her first interaction with the monster in the, in the form of that door. But why did that monster form in Limbo in the first place? You know, everybody's everybody always asked, what the freak is that monster doing? But nobody ever asked, how the freak is that monster doing? Well, you're supposed to go through the door to the afterlife, right? And Death knows this. Death's got a busy schedule on all dealing with all the dead dudes, so I believe he made this little goo monster here to track down her and get her to the afterlife, to go through that door and rebirth. That would explain why it's hunting down the creations too. They're not supposed to be in limbo either. But this doesn't explain her connection to Discord. Uh-huh, or does it? You see, there's another character here that I have neglected to mention in both this video and the last one. A character you all know. If you take the word supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and take all the letters out except for R, O, and G, and put the letters in an order so that it sounds like grow, then you would have the start of this character's name. It's... Grogar! Woo! Yeah! Yeah! In episode 3, the monster turns into the form of Grogar's head in these many little head things that spoke in the episode, but I have no idea what the frick they were saying. Keep in mind this beast can form into your worst fears. Anyway, um, uh, roll the clip! A suitable grave for our reunion. Boy. A reunion, huh? So you guys, um, you guys have met before? Krogar was mentioned in the last adventure, but we're not really going to mention that. What I will say is that this, in my eyes, pretty much confirms that these two have history. I would like to point out that since the beast can, again, form into your worst fears, like, why would Discord be afraid of Krogar's scoob? 
This absolutely suggests history between the two, and it's not just that. You could once again argue that, oh, oh well, maybe it's just referring to the fact that this court turned into a grown girl, but Oh, that just confirms me theory even more! Tell me, me viewers still covered in plastic out of everything Discord could have turned into in Season 8. Why did he choose to turn into Grogar? He could have chosen any old rusty villain from the past, but he chose Grogar. It certainly fits for Discord's character, I would say. Besides, Discord and Grogar probably having history. I don't have too much to say about Grogar, though. Purple ex exclaims that she never really had parents, but Grogar could have been that parental figure in her life and would explain the connection Purple has to Discord. If Grogar and Discord have history, so would him and Purple. It would also explain why Purple feels disappointed that Discord doesn't remember her. Whatever that history was, it was important to her. Also, this man's mouth be looking like a door. Now, the last thing I want to mention is the possibility of a disaster. In the end of episode 3, we get images like these. <coughs> I believe these two are specifically connected to whatever disaster occurred that wiped out Purple and her friends. I have no idea what that disaster is, but uh, that's okay. That's future Spike's problem. I also don't really have much of a clue as to what the ending of episode 3 exactly means, but that's also okay, because I get to I get to have a segue into the final part of this video. The miscellaneous! Most of the things that I observed and found that are in, are in my eyes as important... I just had a stroke, I'm sorry, okay. Most of the things I observed and found here in the miscellaneous section then are in my eyes important i really just haven't found a place to put them yet either that or i just have no idea what the frick to do with them anyway all the thingies number one the gosh damn episode to episode three god i cannot figure out okay the frick that stuff is supposed to numero dos these screenshots Sorry, I'm jamming right now. So yeah, the night sky, the Ponyville at night time, and I get the last one is Death's Eyes, but like, I don't know, man. Number three. Well, this is doubt, no doubt. Well, this is doubt, no doubt. No, this is this is death, no doubt. But why is he playing a piano? Also, the hourglass in the back in the back suggests that the time limit that Discord has is still going on. So, Fimble. Yeah, I think this is just a hint that Grogar is a thing here, and that he's connected to Discord somehow. I hate you. Sis Garden Rant! I'm gonna go with my original thought process here in this picture. I believe this is simply meant to represent the fact that Discord does not have all the pieces to the puzzle. He's missing information. Plus, this picture in Episode 2 was the only one that got any attention put onto it. So I think that this here is supposed to just be a starting point to all the MLP theorists out there. And by all of them, I mean me. The Seven Pits of Heck. This stupid hung bungalow freaky dingle pie. I saw this the last time I was making a theory on this, on this series, and I thought nothing of it. But oh, maybe this, this one maybe just isn't important, though it could be important. But it, nah, it's probably not important, right? At first I thought all flower, full flowers or whatever were not important. But, but, but no. Uh, these, things are so, these things are important. So at first I'm just like, okay, maybe all four, flower, all, all four of these pictures are important. But the pink tulips are absolutely the, the one that is most interesting of note. They're the only one that have scratch marks. Well, possible scratch marks put on it. I don't really actually know what the the black lines are, but they are the same color, whoop de doo as the marks on Purple's picture. You know, went before she died, possibly. And pink tulips do represent rebirth, and I'm pretty sure this relates to Fluttershy and Herbert birth. But that's really all I can say about this thing. Well. There you have it guys, another messy, 
overcomplicated and incomplete theory about our favorite audio drama, Discord and its journey through death. It's been a lot of fun coming up with this theory, and I think I've improved a lot in my crafting compared to the last time I did this. I got a lot more stuff figured out. Wherever the series goes next, I'll be here, sipping my coffee and screaming at the screen over how my theory did not come true. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and until next time... Wait a minute. Oh, I forgot to do the ominous ending. The inescapability of tragedy plagues the lives of our main protagonist once again. Whether it be Friendship is Tragic, Silent Ponyville, this series right here, or some other fourth option I can't think of right now. We just can't seem to start torturing, stop torturing, our favorite My Little Pony characters. So I leave you all with a question to ponder on about the morality of making them suffer. Why stop?